Hey, hey, Tony Gasson here, popping in. Now, something, I, I got a question in the q and I believe it was yesterday, and it said, if, if I'm, it was from a woman, and it said, if I'm dating a man, and he has a negative view about single mothers, is that a red flag? And I think it said he has two kids, and it said, is that a red flag? And I put absolutely that is a red flag. Like it's it's crazy that men date women that they actually despise, but it is very true. And sometimes for the man, it's kind of like keeping your enemies closer type thing. And I've been getting a lot of questions from single mothers. And one thing I've noticed about single mothers is a lot of single mothers are very sensitive. So you got to understand, like when I'm speaking on single moms and single moms and dating, all I'm here to do is help. You're not going to agree with everything because you're in the situation. So you can't see yourself from the outside looking in. But you have to realize this. I don't want to sleep with you. I'm married. Like, I don't want to hurt you. That doesn't benefit me. You being single or single and lonely, that doesn't benefit me. Like, I want to see you in love, happy in a relationship, living it up. You could come to the couple's retreats with me and my wife. You can come to the, you know, read, make it work. Like, I want to see you in a relationship and happy because I got family members. My sister is a single mother of three. And I get to see her pain and stress and worry and just wanting a relationship wanting a relationship and her youngest child is eight years old so he's old enough for her to be in a relationship and he can fully express himself and all of that but here's the thing the reason why you have men despising single mothers is because some of these men they did their woman wrong they did the mother of their child wrong and they're not taking into account the cheating the disrespect and whatever he did to her but he's looking at the fact that she won't let him see his child when he wants to see the child that she wants him to send monthly financial support be on child support or send financial support, have a schedule of when he's going to call, when he's going to see the child, and be consistent. And a lot of single fathers, they want to be able to come in and out when they want to, call when they want to. They don't want to set a schedule. They don't want to be consistent. They don't want to send monthly financial support. They don't want to be on child support with the government either. But nor do they want to send monthly financial support, and they want to have their cake and eat it too. And when a man can't do what he wants to do, he gets butt hurt and he gets upset. And the thing with a lot of men is they only see their side of it. They don't see the woman's side. They see it as, oh, I could take my child where I want to take my child and take my child around whatever woman I want to take my child around. It's my child. And they don't see the woman's side of it as like, listen, I don't want my child around other women. And my child is confused and coming home asking me, Mommy, who is daddy's friend, Jessica or Lindsay or Tanika? And Tanika said this, you know, Jessica said this. She didn't put no salt in my food. And she made my cereal and she had this much milk in there. I just had to crunch on cereal. And that's upsetting a mother. And for some reason, women don't trust women. So I don't know if you think this woman is going to, if the single mom thinks this woman is going to be thumping their child in the ear, going to be putting, you know, sugar, you know, uh, honey in their drawers for ants. Like, I don't know what the single mom thinks this woman is going to be doing, but a, I always hear so many single mothers, they don't want their child around other women or at least until they're of age and can understand what's going on 
And the man typically has the child around another woman because men are oftentimes like little boys in the sense that men struggle being alone. So the reason why a lot of men keep a woman is to have somebody to cook and clean and do laundry. To be honest with you, that's the main reason. Like a man typically is looking for looking to keep a woman so that she does everything his mom did because most moms they take care of the cooking the cleaning of the kitchen doing the dishes doing the laundry packing lunches they do all of that so imagine a man becoming 18 and going off on his own now all of these household duties is on the man that's why when i got to college i immediately found me a woman because I wanted somebody, as an 18-year-old, I wanted somebody that I could borrow their car when I need to go cheat, when I need to go get me something to eat. I wanted to be able to drive their car to see that other woman. I'm telling you the truth now. I'm a married, faithful man now, 14 years, but I got to get to your blood raw now. I got to get to your real. So don't, don't be sitting over there. Oh, ugh, that's how you used to do. That's how you used to do. Because I tell y'all something that I used to do as a man, and it be women getting mad. And they man doing 10 times worse. And, and, and this, is the thing, what, this is the thing what be blowing me is how in 2021 do women act surprised? I'm like, why are you surprised? Like, how can you be surprised by anything I tell you that a man does? Is that are you just capping for the comments, or do you lit have you literally been under a rock? Like, do you read my Instagram Q and A's? There's nothing off limits. Everything happening. So I'm telling you, as a man who grew into a good man, I used to do this. So imagine what the men doing that have no interest in growing. They have no interest in changing. I kept me a woman 24-7 to have essentially a maid. That's it's that's what it was. It's like I ain't really need no girlfriend. Sometimes I ain't even like the woman. But see, that's what a lot of women don't understand. And that's why I'm here giving you the game. You know why I'm giving you the game? Because God convicted my heart because I played the game at the highest level. I was one of the worst ones out there. But not when when I say worst ones, I don't mean literally. Because sometimes I don't know how you the worst one and you got you met your wife at 21. Meaning I played every game you could play. I didn't have nine babies on a woman. That's not what I mean, because it's men out there. But for the time I got out there, I had done everything you could do is a relationship other than be with somebody and go get another woman pregnant other than that but i have done everything else you could do so this is the thing what i need you to understand don't act surprised but that's and that's why i'm trying to help women understand when you go in there and then you superwoman it's so many women you meet this man and you cooking for him out the gate the most you should cook for a man when you dating is once a week and that's honestly a little too nice really once to twice a month is the most you should cook for a man before he your husband laundry you should never do a man do a man laundry until he your fiance living with a man you should never live with no man until he until y'all married really i was about to say fiance but because a lot of people think living together is shacking up. That's not shacking up. Shacking up is when you're sleeping together. It's not a sin to live together. Living together is not a sin because you could live in a co-ed dorm. You could live in a co-ed Airbnb apartment. It's not a sin to live together. It's a sin to be in fornication. And so shacking up is fornication, whether you live together or not. Let's clear that up. Let me help y'all understand what shacking up mean. Yes, we applying it to people living together, but biblically speaking, 
their, their sin comes in is when you fornicating and you living together. That's what shacking up means. You sleeping together and you living together. But only one of those is a sin. And that's sleeping together before marriage. So understand that. Now, so here's the thing. Back to the point of the video. The reason why these men have problems with a single mom is because they have it's two sides of it one are the men who have children and they don't have a good relationship with their child's mother or their children's mothers they don't have a good relationship they've been held to the fire they've been pushed you know to the brink and now they despise single mothers because they assume you the same way you're doing that to your baby daddy you'll do that to them if he gets you pregnant and a lot of times these men can't look themselves in the eye now very rarely you will have a good man who is trying to be an amazing father this is not common and i hate that i have to say very rarely but this is not common if it was i would say it i'm gonna call it like it is i ain't i'm not here to beat up on men or bash men i'm gonna tell it like i see it very rarely do i see a good man who is trying to be a active and good father and for no reason of his own is the woman is keeping him away for the child that that happens but that's not the common thing that's that's the exception to the rule that's not the majority rule so understand that's the one side that these men they come in despising this so when you meet a man if he has kids and he doesn't have a good relationship with his children then that lets you know it's some resentment and some bitterness in his heart and it may be toward his children's mother so understand that on the other side of this the reason why men are afraid to date a single mom is because men see the way women are with us so here's the thing Men understand that a woman loves hard. Read my Instagram Q&A and you will see how hard women love. It is disgusting to see the questions that women ask. It literally will be like, he shot me nine times. And I want to know, is that love and should I stay? Like, this is real. It'd be like he had three other kids since I've been with him. And I want to know, should I stay? He leaves me every three months to and goes for two weeks. And I want to know, is, that, is he cheating or it, does he just need a break? He left me for his baby mother, stayed with her for four years, and now he's coming back. Should I take him back? Like, these are the type of questions. And I'm literally just shocked and appalled. Because the thing is, see, when I post a question in the Instagram story, you can't see the person. I can see the person on my end. So I could see this is not a bot. This is a real face. This is a real face. And I'm getting thousands of questions. So this, I, I know this ain't bots. This is real people. I could look at the person. I could click on their thing. I could search their name. I could go to their profile. I could look through all their pictures. And I could see that this is a real person asking me, should they take their man back who done left her nine times? And I'm like, Lord, Lord, could you have called me to help the homeless? Lord, could you call, could you have called me to be a missionary, Lord, in a third world country? I'm like, Lord, this is a this is feels insulting to my intelligence the questions that I am getting and then the Lord remind me this is real life you was part of the, the reason 
this stuff happening? You part of the reason. Can you imagine the question women you knew was asking? Because you work for me, this your punishment. You got to serve the way Apostle Paul did and pray for grace and mercy that you don't that what happened to Apostle Paul? Okay, Lord. Yeah, all right, Lord. Yeah, all right, Lord. That was a different day and time now. So, Lord, okay. I seen the way Apostle Paul went out. Lord, I'm, I'm going to expect a, a, a little more grace and favor over here now. And so, I'm reminded, this is real life. And so, ladies, when you have a child, that is a soul tie like none other that is an emotional bond so you have to realize when you are a mother and you want to date you have to go to a very far extent to assure this man that you are completely over your child's father and I think a lot of times single moms don't think about that on the side when you meet an average everyday normal man, not a man who has resentment toward a single single mom. This this other type of man I'm talking about is the type of man who he more so has fear that he's going to give you his heart and allow himself to fall in love with you and you're gonna drop him like a bad habit and go back to your child's father. And if you are honest with yourself, if this is not your case, you know a lot of single moms that their child's father can have her at the drop of a hat. And if he breathe in her direction, she drop and draw and she back with him. If he blank in her direction, she at the altar you know a lot of single moms are like that so that is really what's becoming the challenge more so than the men who resent single moms because that is less that's less men than the amount of men who fear dating a single mom and so here's these fears that's coming in and the same fear could be there for a woman who is dating a man with children because a lot of women get left by a man for him to go back to his ex who he has children with because he has a soul tie with her so what you have to understand as a woman who has children this man he has to see a schedule he has to see boundaries he has to see that your child's father has been whipped into shape. Meaning that if he calls you at 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10 p.m., you don't answer the phone. Meaning that when you talk to him about your child's father, you can open your phone and show him where your child's father called you at 11 o'clock and it's red because you didn't answer the phone. And you can express that to bring a sense of security. Now, if you are a man with kids watching this, this goes for you too. And just invert this information. I'm just talking to the woman because that's who most of the questions are coming from. So this man need to be able to see because see, the only time talking about an ex is okay is when you have children with that person, with your ex, because they're always gonna be in the picture. So when a man come into your life as a single mother, he knows that you are forever tied to this man. That is the other fear, is that he doesn't know, see men know men, and what men know, we like dogs, and we like to pee. And so, not like R. Kelly now, we like to pee on territory. And what I mean by that is, a man want to walk around in the house with his thing out, with his shirt off. 
He want to be able to use the bathroom in every bathroom. When you have kids from a man, he knows that that man, he feels like that man has one up on him because that man has had your body before he has had your body. That man has your mind, has had your mind. That man has had your ankles behind your earlobes. So he envisions all of this. He picture all of this. And he does not know to the depths of what you went through with this man and how strong this soul tie, this trauma bond, this emotional bond, this spiritual bond, he has no clear to the depths of it. Because see, to the man coming into your life, as women, y'all just looking at, the single moms, a lot of times y'all just looking at what y'all want. You want a man. And you want a man to get in where he fit in. You want him to be happy to be a stepdaddy. You want him to just be this amazing man to just treat your kids like it's his. And, you, and because you're a mother, you've made it easy for you. But what you forget to realize is that it's a lot of men who don't take care of their own children. So as a single mother, this man is coming in to take care of another man's children. And I remember when I was young, I broke up with my girlfriend in high school because she had a child. And I was over there sacrificing to where we young, I could drive, I'm probably 17, 16, 17. So during the summer, I want to just go pick her up and us go to a matinee. We couldn't go to the matinee because she had a son. And so her son is home with her and her mama working. I'm driving through the movie theater. I'm driving past the movie theater, getting ready to go to her house. I see her baby daddy in the parking lot fighting. Him with a bunch of white boys, him and his white friends, they in the parking lot fighting. I'm like, so I'm over here playing stepdaddy. And this fool out here just living his life. He just come out the matinee. That's what I'm trying to get to. But I can't go to the matinee with my girlfriend because his butt at the matinee. Instead of having his son, the way I can get me a little time with my girlfriend, she got to be with her child all day long. All the time. And then she couldn't get no babysitter. So I'm like, so at that time, too, now I'm 17 years old, I was way too young for that. I could not handle it. And I told her, I said, this is not going to work because I'm not ready to be a father. I'm like, I'm not ready to lose my freedom to where I can't go on a date. I can't take you out on a date because we got to stay home with your son. I'm like, I can't do it. And so I think the thing is, and this is a lesson now. This is painful and this not, and see, this is the thing. Some men is bashing single mothers, but it's coming from a place of hate. Even though I may say some of the same stuff is coming from a place of love. And what you have to realize that love will, the truth will hurt you before it helps you. But if you let it offend you too much, it won't help you. So you can't get offended because this is what you have to realize. This is what you have to realize. And this is what I tell my sister. Anytime she come complaining about her three kids from three different relationships, I remind her, nobody told you to get on your back. Nobody. I was begging you not to sleep with that guy. Our daddy was begging you not to sleep with that guy. Our mama was begging you not to sleep with that guy. You did what you wanted to do. This comes with it. So this is what you have to realize as a single mother. And, and, and this is a lesson for every woman that does not have kids. What you have to realize is when you lie down to sleep with a man, you can get pregnant and that is not going anywhere. That will stick with you for the rest of your life. So you have to make sure that you're not having casual, eh, that you're not in that bedroom for pleasure and not thinking about what comes with that. Because it is so many women that's talking to me that had their children 
out of wedlock. And, and then they are angry because they cannot get another man. And listen, it might not, it's not the season to get another man because there are repercussions for sin. So when you are in fornication and you get pregnant, you can't expect God to just deliver a man on high when you call on that man, when you were having, when you conceived this child in sin. So a part of learning the lesson so that you don't go sleep with the next boyfriend and have a second child from another man that you are not married with or a third child from another man that you are not married to or a fourth child from another man, a part of God protecting you is not allowing a man to come into your life when you want a man. Because see, what God knows that you don't know is that you haven't committed to be abstinent until marriage. Or you have said you are abstinent until marriage, but you don't know yet because you ain't got no red wine with your favorite pasta or your favorite steak or your favorite shrimp uh, scampi in you with your favorite movie on Netflix in you. So you say you abstinent until marriage because you ain't been tested by a tall glass of water in the Sahara Desert. When you got a man who know how to lay him some pipe because he is a plumber in real life and he's ready to give you a tune-up and your body have not been caressed and touched in six months, in six years. You say you are abstinent until marriage, but God know otherwise. But because you his daughter and he love you, he got you in protective custody until you truly have the mindset and the wherewithal. And see, this is the thing what I try to tell humans. I try to tell humans this right here. When you know that you was disobedient and something happened. So listen, if you know you was in fornication when you had that child, be okay being a single mother with no options in that season be okay and say lord i'm gonna sit in this and i'm going to raise the child that i have and i'm gonna raise my children with peace with power with pleasure with poise with joy because i chose to lie down and get pregnant i'm not finna be mad with you I'm not finna be cussing and crying on no pillar because you're not sending me a soulmate to be a stepfather to my child. I am going to accept what I am living with. And listen, that is hard. Some of you just came back to this video because you, cause you, you turned it off after what I said and you took a week away but something kept calling you back to the video so now you back okay welcome back i'm talking to you from love now understand that and this is what you're saying see and you're in the comments stop getting mad with god stop getting mad with your life that's not going to change anything stop getting mad with the consequences of your choices stop getting mad with the consequence of your choice you not mother mary you wasn't just walking down the street and conceived. You was on your back to conceive. So don't be mad on the other end when you got to go through a season of singleness and you trying to force the situation, but God can see what you can't see. God can see that the man you will end up with will end up touching your child. 
inappropriately. And you so desperate and ready for a man, you can't see that. That just happened to my family member. She was so desperate for a man that she was not paying attention to red flags. She know God. She was raised in the church. She, she rededicated her life to Christ every altar call. And still her loneliness got the best of her. And she let a man who talking good move into her house. And guess what that man did? Touch her daughter. And she found out after her and that man broke up and her and her, she caught her daughter crying. And then her daughter told her what that man did. So listen to me, single mother. While you crying out to God for a man, God got you in protective custody. Because you can't see what that man that you begging him for. You can't see what that man going to do. But you mad with me. You mad with the world. You mad with every dating and relationship coach that tell you to sit still. You mad because I tell you, do not date until your child is five years old. I'm not telling you this for my health. Let me calm down now. Let me calm down. See, I got a righteous indignation. Because I care about the kid. Because I'm on the other side of it. I'm sitting on the phone with your child when your child is an adult. And your child can't formulate their words. And I'm sitting on the phone. And I'm taking away time from my children. Because you as a single mother had a man in your house that he was greasing your body. But he was touching your daughter. And now your daughter is an adult. And she on my phone. Boohoo crying for 55 minutes of her one hour coaching session. Because her mama who was not on drugs was desperate for love. And then here go a woman going to tell me. I rebuke you Tony Gaskin. Because the Lord said we should not operate in fear. And listening to this message got me in fear about dating with my young child. Because I should not have to fear that a man is going to touch my child. <sighs> this ain't about fear. It's about wisdom and discretion. This is about common sense. This is about knowing the type of men we got in this world. This is about turning on your news and seeing the pastor, the principal, the police officer going to jail for touching a child, for having art on their computer. This is about common sense. Listen. And then here go the thing. Well, Tony, I know how to read a man. I'm going to be able to tell if a man is that type of man. No, you are not. Because this is every man. This everyday man. This everyday man. Listen. Every man is capable of this unless he is renewed by Christ. So that's why I tell y'all, do not introduce a man to your child inside of one year. Because as men, I'm, I'm crying out in the wilderness trying to help y'all understand what you dealing with so y'all can stop acting surprised and see every man under the sound of my voice knows that I'm not lying about no man and that's why the men with daughters do not want no man sleeping in the house with their child's mother and their daughter is young because men know men 
We all capable of it, including myself, unless we are renewed by Christ. And it's the men who will tell you, I don't need no Christ. That's a slave religion. That's a white man religion. That's the man touching on little girl. That's the man right there that perverted. That's the man right there that watch pornography. Look, I don't watch pornography. I don't masturbate. So if you a man on here, how many men that's going to sit here and look you in your face and tell you they don't even masturbate? I don't even play with myself. You hear me? That's, that's how serious I'm walking with the Lord. So listen, I know what I'm called to. And I'm telling you, stop playing with your life. You're out here desperate for some pipe. What else coming with that dangling? You want you some dangling and some tongue. Because you want to be in the Maldives like Cherie Gaskins. But Cherie Gaskins was not a single mother that had the word about me coming in her life and punching her son who ain't old enough to talk because he two years old. Punching him in the back of the head. Or have her having to evaluate me to see if I do something to her daughter. She only had to protect herself. So you can't look at these women who married and they on vacation. And you can't look at the women who were single mothers and they get married or they in this committed relationship and be jealous because you don't know what she putting up with. You don't know what she going through. You don't know what's being done to her child. This woman tell me she let this man live with her because she got to have a life because she want to have her a man. She let this man live with her and this man is teaching her daughter how to bathe. Teaching her how to wipe herself. This man who she ain't even known for a year. I say, are you stupid? What in the world is wrong with you? What in the world is you doing? See, listen, let me tell you something. With a man, that thing down there, it think on its own. If a woman as married and faithful as I am, if the wind blow hard, that thing finna stand up. If anything touch it, it finna stand up. I could brush up against this desk when I get up. That thing finna stand up. And when it stand up, it's ready to get a release. Do you hear me? This woman talking about this man giving her daughter driving lessons and the daughter sitting on the man's lap do you know what's happening to that man's body it is reacting should nothing sit on a man's lap but his wife do you hear me if he sit his daughter on his lap she need to be sitting on the edge of his knee do you hear me i have clients who their own father their biological father who was in the home with them got aroused and penetrated them. This real life, this real life, y'all women have to stop living in a fantasy world thinking that a man is finna ride into your life like a knight in shining armor. No. When he come in, this man got to be hit across the head with a bottle of olive oil and a holy Bible. This man, demons got to be prayed out this man. This man got to be tried by the spirit. Y'all, it's single mothers. You on your back in the first week with a man introducing to him to your kid 
in the first month because he got your head gone because you so ready for a man. What in the world are you doing? You do not know this man. And the ones that the devil got his hand on is going to look like Prince Charming. He not going to show up with boils on his skin and horns on his head. He going to look like a tall glass of water and you in the Sahara Desert. He going to give you chills. The hair on the back of your neck that you ain't even know you had is peach fuzz. Your peach fuzz on the back of your neck standing up. This man chemistry is so strong. This man got a spirit on him. This man got a Jezebel spirit. This man got a seducing spirit. This man got a spirit of Judas that will get right next to you and that will sell your life away. This man got to be tried by the spirit. If you a single mother, really this go for any woman. When you meet this man, you got to pray on this man. P-A-R-Y now. I ain't talking about P-R-E-Y. You got to pray. You got to fast. You hear me? You got to sup with the Lord. You got to sit with the Lord. You got to try the spirit by the spirit. You got to know your Bible inside and out so that you know the attributes of God. So that when you look at this man and you listen to this man talk, you could talk to this man. You could see what he talking to you about. You could see what he asking you about. And you could say just like a the Saurus, you could say, dur, 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 dur. that's not in the Holy Bible. Hmm. Hmm. It's like a, uh, uh. you get a twitch. You like, mm. you say you a man of God? Mm. Hmm. 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 Man of God, asking to live, asking to move in with me? <laughs> uh. Man of God, asking to sleep with me? A man of God asking me for money? A man of God asking me to be friends with benefit? A man of God keep ghosting me? A man of God give me a word and don't keep his word? Keep canceling dates? Keep not calling? You see what I'm saying? When you understand the attributes of God, then that's when you're going to understand this here man. But see, what y'all doing is you going in with a carnal flesh. You going in with your flesh. See, you letting your aunt talk to you instead of your spirit and your intuition. You want some stimulation. You want your body stimulated. You want your mind stimulated. You want a companion. You want somebody you could flex on Facebook with. You want somebody that you could make your classmates jealous. You want your classmates jealous. That's what you want. You want your classmates, you want your co-workers jealous. You want your Facebook friends who keep showing they, they date night outfit. You want to be able to get in the date night outfit sweepstakes. You want to be couples goals, relationship goals. So you're going in and you putting your children in harm's way. Because you rushing into a relationship. But see, listen. Listen. As parents, when we choose to lie down, that is a life sentence. And see, this the thing. This is where it get unfair at. The woman got the milk. The woman got the nurturing spirit. The woman got the emotional intelligence. The woman got the heart for the child. The woman got the umbilical cord. The woman got the egg. The woman got the stomach that carries the baby. So the man lies down and he get to have pleasure. Deposit his sperm into a woman. She get pregnant. She carry the baby. When the baby come out, the baby got to depend on her for milk. 
the man get to go on by his business. The man get to go on by his business. And so this is what is so upsetting. And listen, I hear your heart. I hear your heart. I get it. I understand that it's not fair to you that as a single mother, you get stuck with the child. You the one that you can't go nowhere. You can't up and leave because your child needs you. You can't date how you want to date. You can't invite people into your apartment as an adult and just let them stay the night and let them move in as you would be able to do if you lived alone. But because you got kids, you got to think about that because you don't know this man well enough to where you don't fear for yourself, but you in fear for your child because you don't know what this man will do to your child. So now you as a woman, you worried about this and you crying and you mad with God at times and you crying out to God and you like my child's father that had 10 girlfriends. My child's father, you like my child's father went and had three more kids, another child, two more children, three more children, four more children. One woman told me her man got nine other kids and got three with her. This man got 12 kids. I'm like, my goodness. I only heard of two men about that. One of them NFL player and one of them had the reality TV show. I'm like, is this another guy? I ain't know there was a man out there with 12 kids in this day and age. Back in the day, yeah, I remember that, but but they ain't have condoms and birth control back in the day, so I understand a man having all them kids. Now we got condoms and birth control. I'm like, my goodness. So listen, I understand that it hurts you, but see, this the thing. When you when you lie down, that child 100% yours. You can't look at it like, oh, I'm finna go 50-50 on a baby. Yeah, because life ain't fair. It, it just, you don't know what that other parent gonna do. Same thing with a man. Because it's men who they woman to ran off on the plug. And the man is left with the child. It could, it could go both ways. It just typically, the woman getting the short end of the stick. But sometimes the man get the short end of the stick too. I got a homeboy who he got his son. The mama ran off. She wasn't fit to be an everyday parent. So she is the weekend parent. And he the everyday parent. Because he had the more stable situation. And so that that's how the mop flops and the cookie crumbles sometimes. So that's why I tell you, and this to every single person who's watching this, who you not a single parent yet. Or you not a parent yet. Be very, very careful when you get in that bed. Even if it's with your husband, because see, this is the other argument for those of you who you had your children in marriage. You say, well, Tony, what about me? I did it right. I was married. No, no, no. Because you was married. But if you single now, unless you a widow, but even if you're a widow, sometimes you still could look back and see. I ignored my mom on this. I ignored my dad on this. I ignored my best friend on this. I ignored my brother, my sister on this. Somebody told me this man wasn't right. Somebody told me he wasn't the one. But I did what I wanted to do. Somebody going to say, well, you know what? God let me know in my spirit this wasn't the one. But I tried to force it. I told God, no, this my husband. This what you got. This what you, when you look back and you really see, cause see, listen, God give gifts and add no sorrow. Divorce is not of God. When we go through a divorce, that's because we got into a situation on our own cognizance. We didn't really sit and sup with the Lord. We didn't really spend time with the Lord. We really ain't pray and hear. See, we pray, but then we we tell God what we're going to do and we say it's God giving us peace. No, that's you giving yourself peace. Because if this don't line up with the attributes of his word, it's not meant to be. But people love to say God said this, God said that, and God don't be a bit more said that than demand on the moon. 
But people will say that because that's what they want to hear. Because what God say a lot of times going to be painful and you ain't going to want to hear it. But see, we don't want to hear that. I need me somebody. I'm getting old. That clock is ticking. So you do what you want to do. And then you end up with the consequences. And then we get mad. We mad about it because somebody else did the same thing and don't got the same consequences. This is not fair. This is not fair. How did this happen? This is not fair that somebody else did the same thing and they don't have to suffer the consequences that I'm suffering. This woman over here, she got pregnant. She done had three kids from three different men and then now she married. And I'm sitting on here with one child and I'm single. And you get mad with God. But you don't know what that woman compromising. You don't know what that woman putting up with. You don't know what you don't know what that woman living with. You don't know what that man doing to that child. I got another client who her mama was with this man and that man touched her from the age of two to the age of 17. Told her mama. Mama didn't care. Mama stayed. It came out in school and that's when DCF got involved. And that's when the mama got in trouble. The man got in trouble, went to jail, but got out. Because the mama went to the pastor. And then the pastor came to the daughter and asked her to recant her statement. To take it back. You know the only reason why the pastor did that? Because he touched somebody's daughter. Because he touching somebody's daughter. He in the pulpit. And he telling this baby. We're going to call her baby even though she was in high school. Hey, you need to change your statement because you're going to get your mama fired from her job. And that ain't right. Her mama could work at McDonald's for all I care. She don't deserve to be no nurse. Her mom was a nurse. And this her story now. She told her story. It's public. That's why I'm telling it. And this the thing. This is the thing. This what be happening. And this why I try to tell y'all. Don't be in no rush for no relationship. Because that relationship not going to save your life. That relationship might ruin your life. The other mother... This other mother that I that I know, she literally battles every single day with taking this man life who touched her daughter. But her daughter was 10, 11 years old. So even beyond the age of five, I tell y'all to wait until five. This woman daughter was 11. And still didn't have the courage to tell her mama until she was 14. Do you hear me? And this mama here, she connected to the streets. So this man here, his life on the line. But guess what? If she take his life and she get caught now, her daughter got to be without her. But guess what? What I have to remind the mama is, is you want to kill him because you angry with yourself. Because you let that man move in and live with you. When everybody you know told you that that man was no good. But you wanted companionship so bad, you put your child at risk. So listen. Although he is disgusting, you still have to accept personal responsibility. Because people try to say, oh no, well you can't be responsible for what somebody else did. Yeah, you're right. You can't be responsible for what they did. But you still got to take responsibility for what you did. So if you ignore all instruction 
and you get into this relationship, I'm talking to you now. I ain't talking to her. I already talked to her. Told her what she need to hear. I'm talking to you. If you so desperate for a man that you don't want to listen, I, I can't wait to buy a lady has been asking me nonstop. Since I since I put in the Instagram Q and A, if you ain't, if you ain't on my Instagram, make sure you start your Instagram. Follow me on there. You are gonna see the question because this the question gonna help you. It's a lot of people telling me how much it's blessing them, how much it's helping them because you get to see what other people are dealing with and you learn before you go through it. So listen to me now. I've been getting nonstop questions from women saying, "Wait till five. Till five." Really? Is that realistic? Is that realistic? Listen. Listen. I just told you about an 11 year old who didn't have the strength to tell. The client, my, my client that I'm telling you about that told her story, you know, and she went on tour and stuff and she told her story, which y'all in the comments asking, Tony, who you talking about? Who you talking about? I ain't saying this client name, but the story public. And told her story. She ain't tell. It was happening from two. She ain't tell till high school or eighth grade. You see what I'm saying? So I'm telling y'all to wait till five. Because as a man, I know men. I know men. And listen, as men, we could be perverted and nasty. In a lot of different ways. Now, some for a lot of men, it's gonna be a it's gonna be above board. It's gonna be of age. But you got a whole lot of men. It's men that I'm sitting right next to in the locker room. It's men you sitting right next to in church. They don't mind under age. Listen to me now. You got to thoroughly vet this man because although your brother, your blood brother, or your step brother, although he is a dog too. He, he, you still could listen to him about the man that you that you talking to. Because he going to tell you now. What I'm telling you is not rocket science. It just, I do it as my purpose, so I show up and do it every day. But your brother, your brother, your brother, your brother-in-law, your daddy, your uncle, your male cousin, all of them could tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. The thing with women, though, is y'all don't like to listen. Y'all do not like to listen. You ask for the truth, and then when I give it to you, all I get is arguing in the comments. That's all I get. And so I'm like, why did you ask? That's like the man on that movie that say, you can't handle the truth. That's why a lot of stuff, I can't even tell y'all everything. A lot of stuff I don't even say. Because... When women ask me to, for the truth and I give you the truth and you're angry with the answer. And it's like, listen, I'm just reporting live. I'm not on one side or the other. I'm just telling you what it is. You got to beware if you're a single mother. And now, this went into a whole nother type of situation, but what I originally was talking about is helping you understand. Let me let me cap that out because I know some of y'all told me where this went at. And I want to know as a single mom, how can I get me a man now and him be comfortable? So remember, you thoroughly vet him. You're dating him, not your child. You're dating him. It's outside the house. He's not staying the night. He's not moving in with you. Inside of a whole year, you date this man a whole year. You Google him, you check background, you, you check everything. Anybody who know him, you ask around, anybody know him, do he got a rap sheet, do he got a record? You doing all your checks this whole year. This is a probationary period, betrothed, betrothed. And you going this whole year before he meets your child. And see, this is the thing. A real man it does not care about meeting your child. That didn't sound right, did it? Listen to me. A real man is not in a rush to meet your child. When a man keep asking about your child, asking about your child, well, I need to meet the child, I need to meet the child, I need to see if we get along, I need to meet the child, I need to meet the child, I need to meet the child. Need to meet the child. Hey, I need to see if we get along. 
That's a pedophile. That's a pedophile. You need to run. When a man begging you about me and your uh, you need to run. Because I'm telling you right here, as a good man, who is an honest, faithful, loyal man, if I was a single man, I don't care nothing about me and your child. Because it's a child. If, if I am in love with a woman, that child can't run me off. I'm not finna let no child scare me, punk me. I'm like, hey, what's going on, little fella? <laughs> oh, you bad? Oh, okay. All right, let's get in here boxing ring. Put your head get on. Put your, put your son on here. I'm finna teach you how to box. Okay, yeah, come on in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, you mad? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. I'm not worried about your child. A real man. And, and this what, because I keep hearing women write me on the Q&A saying, he keep, he keep telling me he need to meet my child. He need to meet my child. He need to meet because he need to see if he can get along with them. He need to see how everything fit with the children. It's like, no. If a man love you, them children going to get in where they fit and they're going to fit right in because he's not going to do anything to you that's not going to be pleasing to them children. That them children going to see the way he treats you and they're going to be so happy to see you happy that they're going to love him too. They might start calling him daddy. This is with a real man. See, a man you got to watch, he keep pressing the issue. He want to meet him. He want to meet him. He want to meet him. And I'm going to tell y'all, it's dangerous for y'all women who got a daughter who is filled out and she live with you. If she filled out, you listen to me now. It's getting too real. Some men will be with a woman to be around their daughter. I see it every day. I see it every day. Keep that man at your house till your daughter at the house. If you ain't dated that man for a whole year and he got signed off by your relationship coach, your life coach, your pastor, your brother, your mama, your sister, your male cousin, your female cousin, your dog. If this man, your goldfish, this man needs yeses around the board. He needs yeses around the board before you marry him and he move in with your daughter he need yeses round the board cause listen oh yeah oh yeah and there's women who have come to me and said hey a lady not too long ago said I broke up with my ex and he now lives with my 22 year old daughter and they like besties. And I just want to know, is that weird? Listen, listen, I'm a man. I know men, I've been around men. It's good men, but you got to try the spirit by the spirit. You got to take your time. You have to, and see, this is a whole seminar. I could do a whole seminar because I ain't got the time right now. I got something, I got somewhere to be. Now I got text messages coming in from people, so I got to get going. This is a whole seminar. I'm going to have to do a Zoom on here for single moms. Help y'all understand and just really map out and be able to take my time. I can't do it on here, so I, I'm going to do a, a, a paid Zoom because I can't do it on YouTube because, for one, I want it to be people that's inside of my, who, who know my heart, who know where I'm coming from and know that I'm speaking from a place of love, not to scare you, not to anything, just to have your antenna up so that you could be prayerful and mindful and using wisdom and discretion. And, um, yeah. I'm gonna have to set up a live Zoom. We we might do 
two hours. Y'all thing muted, turn your camera off. You could be eating some popcorn, drinking some juice, walking around the house. You could be doing squats, doing sit-ups while I'm talking. But I really need to spell this thing out so that you can see how to date a man as a single mom. And you got to realize this just come with the territory because you went all the way through with a relationship and got pregnant and had kids. So now your life is different. Kids change our life. And that just come with it. It's a lesson and a blessing. You can't see it as a curse and be mad about it. Kids going to change our life. So understand this. To the ladies who you dealing with a good man a honest man a real man what i need you to understand is that this man he still has fear about being with you because the reason he has fear is because he doesn't know if you're going to leave him for your child's father he doesn't know if you're still sleeping with your child's father he doesn't know if your child's father is crazy and he is a pit bull that when he mark his territory, that's his territory for life. And anybody come in there, their life is on the line. Because there's many boyfriends who have been killed by a baby father at, at a barbecue. Yes, yes, shot and kill at a barbecue. At the woman's house, the baby father show up and take this man's life. So this is why also single moms are having a hard time meeting a man and this man like dropping his guard and being all the way in because he's literally in fear and it ain't about your child he ain't worrying about the child a good man he worrying about the father so he has to see boundaries in place he got to see a schedule he got to be able to see the way you act when you on the phone with him. He got to see that it's strictly business. But see, a lot of times you get a call from your baby dad. <laughs> what hush? What do you want? Is you going to come see him or not? That right there, that's the wrong thing for your new boyfriend to see. That let him know, oh, this man still can make you laugh. Oh, he still got your heart string. Got to go. Got to go can't trust it can't take that chance with his heart and that laugh could be your personality it could mean absolutely nothing but it got to be by business it got to narrow by look like you know the way the, the energy with your child father when you get ready to get into a new relationship when you want to get a new man it has to be the same energy a judge has the same energy a judge has. They, they full range of emotions. It got to be the same energy like a judge has. Or like a police officer. It's like it's by business. Order in the court. Listen. You keep yelling. I'm going to put you in contempt of court. No games. It's by business. Ain't no key key. Ain't we not friends. This is business. Let's get down to it. And so the new man have to see that you got it like that. If you crying over this man, he know this man still got control over you. You saying that you crying because your child is being hurt, because the man not being consistent. It don't matter what you blame it on. He got control over you. Because your child fine. If you 100% for your child, your child fine. Your child don't need the deadbeat daddy. So what you crying for? If you 100%, that child do not need a deadbeat daddy. If you 100%. So where them tears really coming from now? Anger, frustration. You don't get no alone time because you got a child all the time, but yet he out at the club every weekend. You frustrated, you angry, you a little jealous of his lifestyle because you the mom and now you feeling stuck with a child. And he got power over you. He dangling it. Because... It's asking a lot to say, let me be emotionally intelligent about single motherhood. Come on, Tony, that ain't fair. Let me cry. Let me punch my pillow. Let me be mad with God. Let me, that's not fair. He get to go out every week. He get to date all around. And I got to stay at the house. 
And now when I want me a break and I need him to come watch his child, to pick up his child, he know where to be found. So now I'm stuck in the house again because my mama don't live in this city or she tied up and she living her life. So now everybody out living their life and I'm stuck at home with my child. And I hear that argument from countless mothers. It's not fair. It, I know it ain't fair, but God will give you the strength to weather it, to change your mindset about it and embrace that season and be happy. You could be raising the next Barack Obama. You could be raising the next Serena Williams. You could be raising the next surgeon, the next astronaut, the next MLK, Malcolm X, whoever you look up to. You could be raising the next whoever you look up to. And so shift your mindset and say, my child is a blessing, not a curse. My child is help, not a hindrance. And be all in. So, hey, I got to go. Because it's cranking up. I hear thunder and lightning and all that right there. And uh, when the Lord working, I start working. And I need to, I may have to cancel my, my, my little situation here coming up because it's weather. God bless y'all. We'll talk soon. Oh, yeah. Now, y'all stay, now, y'all pay attention. Make sure if you ain't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Now, y'all know I'm be asking y'all to subscribe, but I'm so you notified when I post about this, the single moms Zoom, the Zoom meeting for the single moms because this thing could be up to four hours. So, you may want to log in from your phone so you could be moving around or you could just block out that day. And so, I give you like a month ahead or three weeks ahead so you could block out that day if possible. And if not, then you just could get the recording. God, but I want to really be able to flesh this out and I don't want to do a live one somewhere because you can't get up and leave your kid. But I want to be able to, but hopefully that day you can get a babysitter for them four hours while we on that session for single moms. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. We'll talk soon.